Or do you feel like you're a strong contender right now for Garrett Cole? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely, uh, you know, in the heavy hitter category, no question about it. But unfortunately, you know, there's a, I'm sure quite a few teams sitting there with us. So that's usually what happens in free agency with these premier type players. So, you know, I can tell you we'll put our best foot forward and see where it takes us. Brian, you were obviously leading the charge in that meeting with Garrett Cole. What did you take away from the meeting? You know, I thought it was a great conversation. Um, you know, he's obviously, we all know what he's like on the field as a competitor, uh, but it was really, uh, it was a good opportunity for all of us to, to get to know the person. Uh, I think, you know, he would fit in anybody's clubhouse as a player, but he, he clearly would fit in our clubhouse as a person, too. I think we have a tremendous uh, chemistry in there and a group of ma uh, merry men that uh, I think he'd fit right in uh, with the performance and the personality. And so, uh, again, uh, I think he's put himself in a great position to, to be courted. And um, at some point, you know, he'll have decisions to make sooner than later, I'm sure, uh, you know, when, you know, his representation uh, fields every offer and and you know he'll just have to pick a location sooner than later but he's a great player and you know obviously uh, it's an option opportunity he's put himself in a great spot he's worked hard to get here and and now we'll see where it goes Brian it was an interesting group you took out to meet him you had Andy Pettit the great Yankee left-hander your new pitching coach Matt Blake and we know with all these pitchers now they crave the information and the numbers did you sense there was a connection with your new pitching coach I mean I clearly without being on the field and in uniform and going through all the stuff I thought so I mean I Again, I, it was it was an easy conversation to have. I thought that uh, um, there was connection with all parties involved, and I thought Matt Blake did a great job of of you know trying to explain who and what he is and how he goes about his business, and and I think it was a great opportunity for Booney, obviously, you know, as a potential manager, and then you know Andy Pettit as a former player, you know, to describe obviously his experiences coming from Houston, Texas, where he grew up, and he grew up in Deer Park, Texas, and and then coming to New York, and what's it like playing on the big stage, and you know Andy still has retained a home, obviously in New York, and um, and so that you know it says a lot. So it was less about trying to convince him about New York as much as educate him and his wife about New York and um, because again it's uh, this process is all about like if they're if they're gonna make a good decision for their family it's gonna be a good decision for us we don't want to drag anybody uh, to an environment that they might not flourish or enjoy uh, as well this is a big partnership you know whoever he decides to partner with and and uh, and for the best of all worlds uh, it's about an educational component about the culture uh, the people uh, the family and uh, and you know obviously what all of New York provides and so it, it's a big stage but it's a great stage Brian as you've been pursuing Cole and planning what to offer him how did Strasburg's contract with the Nats impact what you might have had planning to do well clearly uh, every data point that gets thrown on the board you know is going to have an effect whether it's positive or negative and so uh, you know it was a tremendous contract for for a tremendous pitcher so uh, we had it we had a chance to to meet with uh, Steven Strasburg uh, after our Garrett Cole meeting and and so uh, what a tremendous person he is and obviously a great competitor in his own right so um, but obviously every every contract in theory is going to affect the next one too so um, it all plays a role I'm sure you know Brian you know the old adage you can never have enough pitching right well I thought you brought up a great point in that next season should have full seasons from Severino Jordan Montgomery how important is that what's well, you know it's vitally important listen last year was a unique circumstance uh, year wise why we uh, played this whole thing out and and losing some of those important chess pieces you know it's just impossible almost to to survive it we found a way to do so so i really you know dream about a year like next year potentially could be what would it really be like if we had our a team most of the time if we had the quality innings coming from the people you expect it from especially and and if we can add to it all the better too so um but you're right these you know the one thing that i keep falling back to is we have a great team right now already uh despite some free agents and that we clearly we don't have on the roster but uh, uh, you know improving a 103 win team is difficult um, but the fallback happens to be that we have great players on the positional side all over the place we have a bullpen ready to go and uh, if you talk about the rotation and a healthy rotation of that was Seve, Paxton and Tanaka those three alone line up with just about anybody's mm -hmm. top three then you got Hap you got Montgomery coming back you got some young kids pushing up and, and who, you know obviously the Herman situation although complicated and controversial you 
you know, you know, he's a tremendous, what, an 18 or 19 game winner last year in his own right. And so, you know, at some point, you know, obviously uh, that'll resolve itself. But there's a lot of talent on all aspects of the roster and some that haven't even declared a name yet for themselves because our fans haven't had a chance to see him, you know, rock and roll in New York just yet. So if we can add to it, all the better. One guy that will not be on the roster this year is Didi Gregorius. News came out today that he signed a one-year deal with the Phillies. Do you feel comfortable and confident in Glaber Torres playing shortstop every day, or is that an area that you'll address? Well, obviously, I, you know, there's no official word yet whether Didi is signed yet. I know it's leaked out that he's chosen the Phillies, uh, so whenever that declares itself officially, it'll be easier to talk to. But, uh, you know, We've had conversations with Jim Murray, his representation, um, and but if Didi wasn't here, for instance, uh, we learned last year, April, May, and June, we had Glaber Torres, we had Estrada, Tyler Wade, uh, so we have a number of different players that have shown that they can hold that position and thrive, uh, and so you know our fallback at the very least is a comfortable spot because we have some great players there that we can turn to, um, but that doesn't preclude ourselves of looking at the trade market, doesn't preclude ourselves from staying in free agency, and so at the very least, we're pretty strong and at the very most we have the opportunity to get stronger if we feel that uh, an opportunity presents itself uh, along the way. Ryan, one of the strengths of your ball club is a bullpen last year without Dellen Batances with all the injuries that he had to deal with. Now he's a free agent. I'm sure there's a market out there for him. Are you interested in bringing back a homegrown Yankee? Well, we've we've talked to Dellen. We've talked to, you know, obviously, Gardy. We've talked to uh, Didi and uh, and Cameron Mabin and Romine. So we, we, we're checking all the boxes and staying engaged. Obviously, our, our, our biggest focus focus has been on on the premier starter because we feel like that's the best way to fastly and vastly improve our club uh, and and in many of these cases the fallbacks are we are covered in some of these other areas so we have a chance to be a little bit more careful and slow walk those other ones so but Dylan Batanz has been a great Yankee uh, and the fact that we were somehow able to survive last year out of the bullpen he's been one of the premier relievers in the game for a long time unfortunately that you know the double injuries he had uh, you know took him offline and, and denied us and the fan base the opportunity to watch him do what he does best so so we'll stay engaged with Jim Murray uh, his representation him and K Casey close um, but there's gonna be competition at the same yeah. time you know, you know Dellen is a great person but he's a great competitor and so obviously when healthy you know what he's capable of doing because we lived through it and benefited from it for a long time Brian I know your focus is on making the 2020 Yankees better but one of the biggest stories of the offseason has been the alleged sign stealing with the Astros how agitating is it to maybe have been victimized by a team using those methods well obviously uh, it, it's a little hard to talk to right now given the fact that there's no you know MLB's going through an investigation the stuff that's gone public has been very disturbing uh, and so we're anxiously awaiting to see how this plays out but but I could just I just tell you that what's been playing out publicly and a lot of the allegations if they're true or or half true it's very disturbing and, and so uh, I think we like all the clubs in the game are waiting to see how this uh gets handled from uh, the commissioner's side. Hey, Brian, I'm curious, just back to the cold negotiations for a second. The Angels are also in the game. Your former assistant, Billy Epler, is the guy trying to outgun you. Do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, that's the that's it's the Wild West out there. We're all trying to outgun each other, and uh, you know, and you know, whether it's trades or free agency, we're you know, we're all charged with the same directive, which is to to, to find a way to win a World Championship. And there's a lot of different ways to do it, whether it's you know, with small uh, deals or through the draft, or through international signs and player development, or or obviously you know, premier free agent signs at the same time on top of it all. So. Uh, you know that's the nature of the beast so yeah uh, you know when 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 billy epler left us for anaheim you know he left us so <laughs> so he's he's an angel now and uh and uh you know so but we'll see what happens scott boris continually says he thinks things are close thinks things are close do you think cole makes a decision by the end of this week by the end of winter meetings i'd have to take scott as his word on his end if he's saying that because uh, ultimately all we can do is make sure that we you know signal and provide what we're willing to do and then uh, he's got to factor that in with all the other opportunities to present themselves and so at some point uh, you know the Cole family will make a decision uh, with advice from the Scott Boris Corporation and 
and then you know we live with the results one way or the other. Brian, I always appreciate the time. I guess we'll all wait for the smoke to come out of the chimney, figure out what's going on with Cole, right? That's right. So, uh, you know, in the meeting, I sat down with Cole, and I was like, you've been our white whale. We, we you know, <laughs> draft, and we didn't get a chance to sign him. And then, obviously, trade. we tried to trade for him with Pittsburgh, and it didn't work out. So now, you know, maybe three's a charm. We'll yeah. see. If not, you know, there's different ways to... I remind people last year, we played around with, obviously, a lot of premier free agents. We, we broke bread with Corbin. We broke bread with Machado. And then we wound up pivoting and signing DJ Lemay. Mayhew and Adovino and Britain and uh, did some extensions on some homegrown guys and and so at the end of the day there's a lot of different ways to put a championship caliber contending team on the field uh, there, you know there's some ways are more public more obvious uh, but but that doesn't mean that if uh, you know the routes you take uh, you wind up getting some obstructions here or there you, you, you find a different way up that mountain if possible